Okay, next step in the decon process is to get the iron off the car. We'll be, I'm interested to see. We won't be able to see it so great because this is a blue car. Uh, but I have CarPro Iron X. I have this in my store. Uh, this is a really smelly, nasty product, but this does the job. Uh, we can do it on the glass and on the paint. This is a uh, one liter bottle full. I'm going to let it rip on this thing. Now, if you're really concerned that you have a ton of iron, I'm not really sure what I've got on here, you could blow the car off and then dry it. And you, you probably have a less diluted iron removal solution on the surface, but I've always found that doing it this way is just fine on a damp car. So this product, you want to spray it on, and I'm using a pretty decent, this is a Tolco, you know, chemical resist resistance sprayer, which atomizes the product pretty well. I guess I should probably be wearing a mask, but but I found that I don't even need to, I don't need to agitate. Back in the day, I used to, I would take a, a, a wet microfiber cloth and I would come over this and just kind of wipe it, make sure I covered the whole surface. But I haven't done that in many years. This seems to work. So I'll end up using three quarters of a liter on a car of this size, maybe maybe between half and three quarters. You can use it on the wheels, you can use it on the glass. You don't want to concentrate on hitting, on, on avoiding plastics and things, but you don't want to hit it if you can help the, you know, specifically, you want to, you want to avoid it if you can, rubbers and things like that. Carbon fiber, anything clear coated, Good to go, all fair game. Just now realizing I didn't turn the stopwatch on. So we won't be stopwatching this. Okay, so the whole surface is covered. You know, I used, it was like the bottle was to here. Uh, I used, you know, a little bit more than half, just like I said, to do the whole car. So let's see what happens. Wouldn't be surprised that this car has never been iron removed. So there's probably a fair amount of it. Yeah, we can already start to see it develop on the surface. There's dots. I don't know how well you guys can see it. Oh yeah, quite a bit of iron. Now we don't want to let this dry on the surface. So I want to let it sit for four or five, maybe 10 minutes at most. And I'm not seeing, I'm actually surprised. I'm not seeing a ton of iron. So the concept in what I call step two of the process, we still have it sitting on the surface here, is that there's little bits of iron from rail cars or from transport or just from being in the environment from brakes if, you're, if you go to the track often. So little particles of iron floating in the atmosphere sit on the paint, grabs onto little cracks and crevices of the, of the clear coat because your clear coat is jagged. Uh, if you were to look at it under a microscope. And uh, what we don't want those iron particles to do is to dislodge and polishing, and then we end up grinding those iron particles into the, into the surface of the paint and not realizing it. So generally those particles are either too small or too embedded in the clear coat, in the jagged edges of the clear coat, and so your clay bar won't get them. And so the way to get rid of them is right now what we're doing is we're chemically breaking those small little particles down. So we are now good. It's been sitting on here for eight or nine minutes. We're now good to rinse it. Again, I'm gonna use DI water like I have been. Yeah, it'd be hard to see even if there was, but it's been about five minutes here. Not a whole heck of a lot of iron going on here. You can see some dots here, here. So not much embedded in the surface. Okay, I'm always gonna start on the glass. And so the glass isn't as heavily contaminated, but I start on the glass, it's just become a habit. When you get a new, especially if you buy a new nano skin scru um, auto scrub sponge from me, you're gonna want to break it in on the glass. And so I don't use pressure, I use speed in this application. You know, I don't need a lot of pressure. I just need, and I don't, I guess I don't need the speed, but the speed is what I find actually helps to remove the surface of contamination. 
And because our Atom soap is pH neutral, I've never had any issues with this, this nanoskin glide affecting the paint. You know, if it dried on the surface, it comes off. No biggie. So I don't need to rush, worry about rinsing the car off all the time. I don't need to worry about that. Let's try the auto scrub on the surface here. I don't know if you can hear that. You know, we're lubricated with DI water. Just so, so heavy. Had such heavy contamination on this. I don't think I've ever felt. Well, I guess I have. But not a nice car like this. Heavy, heavy contamination. So this is certainly going to mar the surface. So we'll definitely need to polish, which I'm going to anyway. I'll be happy if I can just use this and not have to break out a clay, the clay bar. Oh, yeah, we're going to be just fine. Auto scrub it is. If you do happen to miss any tiny little piece, you'll get it with the polisher. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want to get it. Oh, wow. Oh, hallelujah. Let me get this done. I'm going to bring my bucket over here and my smaller sponge. So I mainly put the Adam's soap in there just because I didn't use any DI water. So this will just neutralize any minerals or anything on the in the water and make it neutral. So for years, I've always done this process the night before polishing. So we're doing this now so that tomorrow you know, we have the car dry by the time I start taping and polishing. And believe it or not, I'm just going to leave it out here in the wash bay and then I'll just wipe it off. I'll drive it over to headquarters and we'll dry it off and then wipe it down. I guess wipe it down and then dry it off when I get there. Oh my gosh. So much contamination. I've never heard an autoscope sound like this. So let's get you a good solid angle of the trunk here. Show you what we're up to. So you know, I'm hosing it down. You can't use too much of this. I'm gonna hose it down really well. Again, not a lot of pressure. Just some speed, back and forth motions. To get our, this is gonna stay. I like this a lot. BMW Performance, rear lip. So this is nice. It suits me. So I'm not gonna get the CSL, CSL style trunk. I've always liked the look of this better. Even though the CSL looks more complete. Although, I wouldn't put it past me to wake up one morning and decide I, I wanted to do it. It's actually cleaned up way easier than I thought it was going to. I thought this was gonna be a rough go piece of cake all right so that's the process i'm going to go around and do the car and i'll come back to you and we'll wrap up the decontamination part of this whole process okay so we're completely deconned uh, the car is done and ready for polishing so now i'm going to blow it off now we don't want to use this uh we don't want to use any kind of drying aids or anything like that on the car so because I use DI water, I'm just going to blow it off and then just do a quick little wipe down and let it sit overnight. Uh, actually, before I do that, let's, uh, let's hit the wheels with some Hydes. This is Hydes uh, Serum Rust Stopper. I always put this on before we get to the drying process. That way I can blow the excess off with a blow dryer here. So that's Hydes serum rust stopper. I don't have this yet in the store, but I should probably chase it down. Start offering it. It's good stuff. Well, I should probably mention that, you know, I use this Ego, this is the Ego 530 CFM model. The 570 or 580, the one up from this, you know, is a little bit more expensive. I really wasn't too concerned about that, but the battery life on this is better. But then I went and bought the big battery or one of the bigger batteries. This is the uh, four amp hours version, which makes it a lot heavier. Uh, but you need two batteries if you really want this to work properly. Uh, but I use this over the Master Blaster. I bought a Master Blaster probably 2007, 2008, something like that. I bought that and uh, maybe it was 2005 
Anyway, so long, yeah, 2006 or seven is when I bought one. It was 300 bucks, it was a lot of money for me at the time. And I just didn't like having to get it out, dragging it around, banging it off of so the wheels of the car. Uh, I didn't have anywhere to mount it to a wall. Even if I did, I don't know, just vacuum cleaner type things just feel kind of old school. And uh, this is just way better. And finally, we have an electric option uh, that's a better solution than the uh, than the gas version. The gas was fine. Gas doesn't blow any oil or anything over the car. Uh, but Ego 530 CFM model, I think I ordered. I think I ordered the little tip thing, so I should have that here shortly. But one thing I learned is make sure that this is on tightly, because the last RS video I blew it on the front of the car, it smacked off the hood or off the roof. Okay, so I'll just do a quick drying here, just a quick little wipe down. But that's the uh, that's the gist. I guess that's the detail of the decon process. We now have paint that's clean, contaminant-free, ready to polish. And I know, again, this looks fantastic on camera right now. But I promise I'll show you tomorrow what it looks like. Now the hood is much newer, much fresher paint, the hood and front bumper, because these were the areas that were repainted. Whoever painted it did an amazing job, but it, even this is all scratched up. But it's not going to take much for us to get this thing up to OG standard. But to recap the process, he would generally, I would generally do the engine bay first. So I'd knock out the engine bay using that process where I'm using all purpose cleaner. And then Meguiar's D170 hyper dressing to dress the engine bay and you just walk away. Then we would normally, which I didn't do when I, I did the engine bay second, then we would use the decontamination soap to prepare the surface for iron removal. So we want to strip waxes or sealants off the surface. We remove the iron with uh, Carpro Iron X, followed by, in this case, auto scrub. Yes, uh, this is great. It's a little grabby because we don't have anything on the surface. Uh, but we've got the contaminants removed using auto scrub, the nanoskin auto scrub combined with Aniskin Glide, and I'm drying here. So you can see why I have these big drying towels as part of my microfiber package. I do use these quite often for different, different projects, different things. If I ever use O&R on the car and do a rinseless wash, I use it a lot of times if I were claying in a garage. It's just all kinds of applications that I want a bigger waffle weave drying towel. So what I'll do, I'm just gonna use this go around, just do a quick drying of the car. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then tomorrow, I'll drive the car over to HQ. And it's okay, I know many of you will have this question of, well, what do you do? You're gonna leave it sit out overnight, what are you gonna do? We just, we'll just wipe the car down. I mean, it's not like we're gonna pick up contaminations, contamination in the surface overnight. We might get some dust or some bugs or some dirt, but we can just wipe that off prior to polishing. So I'll show you that. So we'll do a prep wipe down once we get it over there. Okay, so that's it, that's the process. I'm gonna clean out the door jams here, uh, but I guess I'll uh, see you for episode three, which will be taping and assessing and then probably doing a test spot, figuring out what works in the surface. Oh yeah, all kinds of, all kinds of straight line scratches. But we're gonna get this M3 up to standard. So thanks for watching the uh, decontamination process in episode one and two. What happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. Foot to the floor. Foot to the floor.